crowd here. So we look into how to build a um, simple low voltage AC power supply. Let's have a look at what components are needed. So let's have a look at the very heart of the power supply. So that's something that looks like this. This is a toroidal um, transformer. And, um, they're very efficient, around 95%. Compact compared to a core type transformer, about oh, half the size. And also, way much less, so also you get the half the size in weight or half the weight. But this is actually quite heavy in itself and less mechanical harm, so it makes less noise. So, if you want to make a um, yeah, integrate this into a low noise solution and there's a very, very good solution. And it's got um, low, um, no load losses. So, so when you're not loading it, it doesn't need, need that much power from the, from the network. So anyway, let's just have a little bit of a look at some of the details. The, um, as you see, it's got quite a lot of wires coming out of it. But they're all um, actually documented here on the side, so it gives you the color coding for um, what the individual wires, wires are used for. And um, this specific uh, toroidal transformer, it has um, two primary coils, and this is to support um, 150 volts or um, 230 volts. So depending on what region you are, you can wire, you can wire up the primary to, uh, for the correct voltage. And uh, it ha this one has two um, secondary, independent secondary coils, and that's um, two times 12 volts, and they're each around, rated around seven amps each. And also, it actually comes with the mounting gear. with this kind of a kit so you have um, two plates and then the through bolt to you and then uh, soft soft mounting rubber so you can, it doesn't get any vibration transmission so so combining this with the transformer you can actually easy, easily mount it on a, in a box so when it comes to the box I haven't really decided if I'm going to um, buy a box or design one and 3D print it, so we'll see in the next phase. But anyway, let's start looking at some of the components. So obviously you would like to be able to connect it to the mains. And um, my solution is this. So you have a mains, cable, a mains cord, and then you have a on-off power switch. And then this also has um, an integrated fuse for the primary side. And my voltage, it's European, so it's 230 volts. And then, um, have a look at the, some of the other things that are needed. switches for the secondary um, side, so I'll be keeping them independent, um, the two 12 volt circuits. And then I also want to protect those on the secondary side also, so the secondary side will have its independent fuses. And now I will be uh, using these banana connectors using color designations to separate the, um, the two, um, uh, two secondary voltage, uh, voltage lines. And then for a little bit of a retro touch, I thought I'd add some um, add, uh, two analog um, amp meters. Of course, there's no point in having a voltmeter because we know that it's 12 volts. RMS, so uh, I won't be measuring the voltage, but uh, it, it's nice to have the amperage, so you can see how much current's got being used. I don't 
don't intend to overload overload this in it, but I thought I could actually utilize a um, temperature activated switch and a fan. That probably won't be good enough to integrate that for um, the cooling, even though I don't think it's strictly necessary. Oh, anyway, that would be um, what one. <laughs> oh wait, transform. That won't fit in the picture. So anyway, I have to put all this together. So um, yeah, follow up will follow in the next video. So I hope you found that informative. Um, please consider subscribing. Uh, merch is available. Or if you'd just like to buy me a cup of coffee, the links are in the comments. Um, and all the contributions will go to developing the channel. And uh, see you in the next one.